G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up a Dell G7. This one is the Dell G7 7790, which is written down here. Gonna need a small Phillips head screwdriver and somewhere to put those screws to begin with. And the screws here, I do predict, will be of a slightly different length. Now, there's two missing at the front on this one, so I won't be undoing the two at the very front, which is here and here. So far, these screws have all looked to be the same. And while I get, when I get in there, I want to see what can be upgraded. And I want to also check out and see what the thermal paste is like and give it a dust blowout. As I'm undoing these back screws here, it is lifting up the back cover. Which in turn should mean that getting the back off should be a bit easier. It's lifted it. Opening it from the back to the front. There we go, right in. I'm going to spin this around so the orientation's a bit easier for me. As we can see here, we have NVMe, 2.5 inch SATA, two RAM slots. To begin with, I want to disconnect the battery. So I'm going to zoom you guys in, down to here. And this looks like... Hmm, it's got a pull tab to go up. And that's exactly how it goes. Pull that up and out before we touch anything. Let's see what we've got. We have 8 gig here, we have assumably 8 gig there. Before you touch the RAM, I always touch somewhere metal on here, just to discharge any static. And to remove the RAM, we lift up the plastic tab and pull these metal bits here where my thumbs are, spread them out. So if I go like this, it should pop up. From there, I can wiggle it, pull it back and have a look. We're an 8 gig PC4 2666. We do have this little notch here that does have to line up with the board. So there's a little cutout on the board. I'm going to put the RAM in on a 45 degree angle, like so, and then pull down. So I'm going to line it up, push it in, now push down. These bits here should click into position once the RAM's in, and it should be okay from there. That's all good. Next up, I want to have a look at the NVMe drive, which is here. A couple of screws. One, two, that can lift up. And we have a very teeny tiny baby SSD down here. Well, NVMe drive. Under this screw, and wiggle that out. We are a 256 gig model. I can get you to focus on there. There we go. By a brand I can't say I've really heard of before. Kyoxia, I believe maybe this pronunciation. Anyway, that goes in similar to the RAM, 45 degree angle, pull down. So potentially if we have to, to move to a larger NVMe, this bit can slide out, we push down here, push it out, slide into that. So we've got a 2242 NVMe SSD. The 2242 is the length. Lined up the notch, pushed it down, screw it back up. And bingo. It's screwed up too much and it's wiggled slightly loose. There you go. So most drives you will get will be the 2280, which will be the full length for this. Put that back on top. One here, screw the cover back in. And then we've got a 2.5 inch drive down here. So I'm assuming this would be a one terabyte, maybe a two terabyte. There, here. Let's so disconnect the cable. I'm gonna hopefully pull that up slightly. Pinch that with my fingers. Pull it, pull it, flip it, and we're a one terabyte WD blue. So that's pretty straightforward. You undo the four screws on the back, take out the drive, put the new one in, four screws here, and then we'll slide this back into place here. Connect this back up, it'll only fit one way. Push it back in, and then you've got your three screws to put back in once more. I did find it weird how the cooling pipe is currently blue. That is slightly bizarre. 
And what else can I see that's replaceable on here? So the charger port, if you've accidentally damaged that, that will be replaceable. That's it right here. This big chunky little son of a. And then we've got the Wi-Fi card down here, which has a killer 150 or 1515 installed on here. So you'll be able to change that to another wireless card. The removal of that's very similar to the NVMe drive that we just did. And next up, I'm gonna start undoing probably the fans. Just feeling them. The copper coolers seem to be relatively stuck. Well, actually, to begin with, I'm gonna go give this a blast with my air compressor to remove most of the dust out of the fans. So I'm gonna assume that these stumpy screws are gonna be all for the fans. Just move out of the way. Looking down here, this is why we take the fan off. You can see the amount of dust along here. Weird, it's not dust, it almost seems to be tape or foam that's lifted or a deliberate obstruction by Dell, I'm not too sure. By the way, why put the, the fan there? If you're just going to block it off, look at that. Okay. Simply doing that's going to increase the efficiency quite a bit. There. Next up, the other side. I would assume that this side one, two, and four are going to be the GPU side of things, and the smaller right hand side, the CPU side. Well, let's find out. Might be completely wrong with that. That's lifted. And I'd take this one out. Still a bit fluffy in there, a bit fluffy on the side here, a bit more of a dust blow once I get this out. I'll disconnect the fan by just walking it left and right. So CPU fan over there, lift this over, we see the thermal paste and the thermal pads, delicious. So now I'll get some tissue paper, isopropyl, clean all this up and put some fresh thermal paste on there. Some on here, some on here, down there. So just make it a bit soggy for me and hopefully lift off a bit easier. That's just some isopropyl alcohol. And with that, I should just be able to wipe it up. If I get a luck. I recommend not to do the thermal paste removal if it's sitting on the board. But for the sake of the video, it is sitting on there right now. Go. A quick Google reveals that this processor, the graphics chip in here, should be a 2060M. So an RTX 2060. So some fresh paste on that. Won't exactly hurt. As they are around about 
two, three years old now. Okay, happy with that. Now I've just got some Silverstone Thermal Grease. Stuff should do the job just fine. If I can get the wrapping of it. Go. Put some on the CPU. And on the GPU. I will look for in the comments for people raging about improper thermal paste application. This will be fine. Go. Cap back on that. Now from here, put this back over, line up the screw holes, make sure the fan is out of the way. That's in position. From here I can screw it down. I'll just work my way with a light amount of tension on each screw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next up, I need to reinstall the fan. Can I push this connector down here? That over, over the top. I didn't bother replacing any of the thermal pads as they all, all still seem to have a fair bit of moisture to them. So they're still, still acting as they should. So, there. Next up, over here. Line that up. One. Two. Three, next, it's connected, it's connected. Next up, battery connection. Just a bit line that up and push down. Go. Zoom out. Next up, all I really need to do is put the bottom cover back on and we're done. Actually, one thing I would also recommend doing, which strangely, I can't see on this side. I was gonna say it was tighten up the hinges. I don't know if I can't actually see the hinges from here. No, can't do nothing with that. Let's seal it up. Sit on the top, push down, work your way around. Should click, click and crunch into position. may have to do those two back screws up here first. That's going. Over here. Get that done. The rest of the screws here, pretty much the same length. Typically, if I have to leave screws out, I usually leave the ones in the middle out and focus on the outer edges. Try to have one in every corner if you are missing quite a lot. And that's how to replace the thermal paste on a Dell G7. And while we are there, we looked at the RAM and other upgrade options. Hope this helps you. And I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.